Good morning, Windsor United Methodist Church. Good morning. We are so glad you're here this morning as we worship together, as we praise God together, as we think about where God lives and moves and breathes in our lives. Uh, as you come to worship today, everything you need will be found in the bulletin and on the screen and in your United Methodist hymnals. And so maybe we can worship together uh, and find out where God is unfolding God's self within this service. There are a few announcements we want to give your way. Uh, first, we want to welcome those that are on Facebook and YouTube to a community of faith here that loves and cares about you. Uh, first announcement, I just want to thank everyone that was able to come to last weekend, last week's town hall meeting. Uh, this was a time for us to share together the responsibility of thinking about and dreaming about and seeking out where the church is going, uh, our church is going, where our ministries can be enacted, and hearing the voices of our congregation as we think about what leadership looks like in that. This will not be the only town meeting that we do. We're going to be doing another town meeting here, probably one in December. I believe it is uh, the 8th, but I will, you'll see something in the bulletin and in the blast about that. Just a reminder, the weekly blast email or newsletter once a month contains what's going on in the church, and it's a good way for you to be <coughs> acquainted with where you can plug in, where you can help out. You are the church. We are the church, right? And so this is a great opportunity for you to get to know where it's going. On. A few things I want to focus on. Today we're shifting. Uh, October we have been, doing, we have been uh, collecting food for International Food Month. And so on a monthly basis, we collect food on the back table as a way to combat food insecurity within our community. And so we will be shifting this month to next month, but today we will bless the international food that we've collected. November is a busy month, and so keep on top of what's going on in November. We're going to start out next week. The first Sunday of November is All Saints Sunday. We have Veterans Sunday after that. We will move into later in uh, November a Gratitude Sunday on the 24th, followed up by an ecumenical Thanksgiving service at 11.45 a.m. It will be a potluck where we share it with the Windsor Heights Lutheran Church. Presbyterian Church and Catholic Church are all coming together to celebrate gratitude on the 24th. Later that day, we will have charge conference, our yearly charge conference at Emmanuel at 3.30 p.m. We ask that if you're a leader in the church or anybody really is involved and invited to come to charge conference and hear about the ministries of this last year and think about where we can continue those ministries into the future. We have a time then we will be moving into Advent before you know it. And so keep looking at what is going on at the church and where you can plug in. I think there's some other announcements. Cheryl, you have an announcement to give? To acknowledge that the flowers on the altar today were from the funeral of the Also, I'm going to thank everyone that helped us set up and serve and clean up after the service. It was a lovely service. So thanks to the congregation that helped Harry celebrate Harry's funeral. Thank you, Cheryl. Harry, uh, we celebrated yesterday, a longtime member of the church, and for everybody involved, just to reiterate, for those that are online, Cheryl was thanking them for the setup, the cleanup, and uh, reminding us that the flowers on the, the altar are from his service. Is there any other announcements that we need to share? No? Then let us stand and turn together in the middle of the world. gather to give thanks to you, O Lord, with all our heart. We will sing your praises before all of creation, and rejoice in your steadfast love. You have created us, O Lord, and made us for yourself. In you we become everything you have made us to be. Please join us in the opening hymn, You Are My All in All. 
wall, and the words should be up on the television. <laughs> So we need to be in cat, uh, prayer for Kathy Moeller, who had surgery this last Thursday, is what I heard. And so, merciful God, hear our prayer. What other things can we lift up in prayer today? Yes, Mary Ellen. Our country, as we face elections. Yes. Every four years, or every time that we have an election, I should say, there's tension in the air. So we are lifting up our country and those that participate in the voting and the election season. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Let us go to God in prayer. We're going to start with a moment of silence to center ourselves and then we are going to move in to the opening prayer in unison.
God, we come together today to stand before your throne and to be in your presence. We are here to worship a remarkable God. The love of God welcomes us. The grace of Christ awaits us. The joy of the Spirit enfolds us. We come not as slaves, come as the truly free. We come not as petitioners, we come as those who are hardly heard, already heard. We come not as interlopers, come as invited guests, coming not as the outsiders, come as much wanted children. The love of God emboldens us, the grace of Christ redeems us, the joy of the Spirit uplifts us. We come as the joyful, as the eager, as the thankful, as the recipients of amazing grace. In worship, let the love of God overflow our hearts. The grace of Christ liberate our spirits. The joy of the Spirit sing in our minds. In the name of the full power of heaven and earth, amen. We come, Lord as those that yearn for healing, for life, for love, and hope in your midst. We pray for those that go through this season of elections, those that are the poll workers, the setting up of, those that live in the tension of wondering what's next for our country and the world around. Bring your peace and your calm, Lord. And let us not be divided but find unity in your spirit. We pray for those that are coming out of surgeries, Lord. We ask that you be with them and bring recovery to them. Allow them to know the fullness of life and have healing. We thank you for family that are visiting from far away, that come back and be in our presence. We thank you for the laughter and the joy, the moments of learning and connection. God, may they travel safely home in the next few days. God, we come before you with a world that is torn, but a world that has beauty. For the areas where war has torn apart, divided, to crushed and oppressed, we ask that your justice reign and that your peace be known. For the areas where good has come in and opened up with a light in the darkness, has created space, has created space for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, with gratitude in our hearts. In the name of the one who taught us to pray, we say today, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Today we are reading 2 Kings chapter 22, 1 through 13, chapter 23, 1 through 3. And if you would open your Bible, you'll see that some of the names have been omitted for the ease of your liturgist. So, but it's a good story. Josiah was eight years old when he became king, and he ruled for 31 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jedidah. She was Adahai's daughter and was from Bosketh. He did what was right in the Lord's eyes and walked in the ways of his ancestor David, not deviating from it even a bit to the right or left. In the 18th year of Josiah's rule, he sent the secretary to the temp Lord's temple with the following orders. Go to the high priest, have him carefully count the money that has been brought to the Lord's temple and that has been collected from the people by the doorkeepers. 
it should be given to the supervisors in charge of the Lord's temple, who in turn should pay it to those who are in the Lord's temple, repairing the temple, the carpenters, the builders, and the masons. It should be used to pay for lumber and quarry stone to repair the temple, but there's no need to check on them regarding the money they receive, because they are honest workers. The high priest told his secretary, I have found the instruction scroll in the Lord's temple. Then the high priest turned the scroll over to the secretary who read it. The secretary then went to the king and reported this to him. Your officials have released the money that was found in the temple and have handed it over to those who supervise the work in the Lord's temple. Then the secretary told the king, the priest has given me a scroll and he read it out loud before the king. As soon as the king heard what the instruction scroll said, he ripped his clothes. The king ordered the priest, the secretary's son, Achaim, Micaiah's son, Akbor, Shephan, the secretary, and Isaiah, the royal officer, as follows. Go and ask the Lord on my behalf, and on behalf of the people, and on behalf of all Judah concerning the contents of the scroll that has been found. The Lord must be furious with us because our ancestors failed to obey the words of this scroll and do everything written in it about us. The king sent a message and all of Judah's and Jerusalem's elders gathered before him. Then the king went up to the Lord's temple together with all of the people of Judah and all of the citizens of Jerusalem, the priests and the prophets, and all the people, young and old alike. There the king read out loud all the words of the covenant scroll that had been found in the Lord's temple. The king stood beside the pillar and made a covenant with the Lord that he would follow the Lord by keeping his commandments, his laws, and his regulations with all his heart and with and all his being in order to fulfill the words of this covenant that were written on this scroll. All the people accepted the covenant, the word of life. Thanks be to God. The last few weeks we have been entering through this narrative lectionary that he's been talking about the direction of how we got to the kings and what it means to go from God's covenant that was born through creation, a covenant of blessing, a blessing that you can receive uh, God's presence and support, and a blessing that you will know what is good in your life. <clears throat> and then as the, the people of Israel move through this, we get to a point where they elect kings and it comes out of a time of judges, and we come here now to Josiah. One of the things that we've learned through this is that each generation, they start out with the best intentions. They want to do good, but something changes. Either it's their own desire or their negligence, but they find themselves in a darker place than they started. And it takes the light of God to kind of carry them back to where they need to go. That's where we find it today. Three weeks ago, I told you that even in the darkest situations, the proclamation of blessing, and I define that as the, the sharing of hope, can change things, can reorient things towards good. Last week, what I told you is that we're set apart as a people, that we're set apart as people, to know what it means to love others, to carry mercy, to have justice, to show compassion, that if there's anything that we are to be about, it's about to be set apart for these things that are the character of God. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about what it means to keep our eyes open, our ears open, and to pay attention to where God is moving in our midst. Will you need an attitude prayer with me? God, I ask that you take the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, the yearnings of my soul, and put them up to your fire, Lord, to your light, and clarify them in your image. 
so that everything that I say here is a reflection of who you are, holy and wonderful, loving and full of grace. Let the words of my mouth be sweet on our ears and challenging to our hearts so that the world around us may know who you are in our midst. In your holy name, amen. It was a while ago that I was on a mission trip with a group of uh, youth, and we were probably the, I think we were the eighth or ninth week of people coming to a house to work on it. Our team was kind of, came later in the season because we were known as, we had been doing this type of work for so long as the same team that we were known a little bit as the cleanup crew. You know, the first group would come in, and they would try to get stuff done, but as it is with mission trips, you have a long list of things that you have to do on a particular project, and you think you can get it all done, but the truth of the matter is, you can't. And as the week progresses, as you get closer to the end of the week, people start to get hurried in their work, and because they're hurried in their work, they stop paying attention to the details. The details Bad. But the work, it gets a little sloppier. And especially with people that are untrained and don't do this every day, it's hard for them to set the pace, to pay attention well, and to focus on the details of what they're doing. Week after week, and we get to the eighth or ninth week, I can't remember what it is, and our team was there, and I was brought to a room where they had taken off the drywall, they had put back on stuff, and they were supposed to be putting on trim to make everything look nice. But as the weeks progressed, and things came out of alignment, things weren't as flat as they wanted, they would slap on a little bit of thing here, a little bit of thing there, a little trim here, a little trim there. And by the time I got to it, I tell you what, what used to be a half an inch thick now looked like it was eight inches thick of slapping on of things. Nothing was flat, nothing looked right. Little pieces upon little pieces stuck together like paper mache as if it was a sad art project. And yeah, I did the job. I covered the holes, I kept things looking tight. I suppose it was a wall if you wanted to call it that. But when you stepped back and looked at it from afar, mm, it didn't look quite good. It didn't look like it should. Nothing was level, nothing was flat, everything was off. And they took me in there and they gave me the job of saying, John, I don't know what to do here, but can you take a look at it? I looked at it, and they wanted me to put a little trim here, a little trim there to tie everything together. But it came, became very clear and abundantly clear what needed to happen. We needed to tear it all down, take it all off, and start fresh, and start new. And so the work was there. Slowly and surely uncovering and looking deeper into and paying attention to how it had gone awry. Sometimes in life, things get built upon other things. The directions that we go are a collection of the small decisions and the small things that we put in place the directions and how we go about our lives are built upon what we have done before. And sometimes, I'm sure the church would never do this, sometimes where we get to is a place where we ask, how did this get to be? And no one can answer it because it was built upon the small actions Sometimes we get to a place in our own lives where we ask, 
how did we get here? And we forget all the small decisions that were built upon, the small comments, the small actions that built up to get us where we were. Sometimes in relationships with others, when things fall out, we ask ourselves, how did we get here? We forget all the small words, actions, moves. And we have to wonder, is it better just to tear it down and start anew? The scripture today is about that. You see, Josiah comes later in the term of kings. Isaiah places Uzziah, uh, Josiah somewhere in the 7th century BCE, sometime after a long string of judges and kings where they set out to do things with the best intentions, but as you read the scripture, things get darker and darker and darker. And let me be clear, when I say dark, I mean without the presence and light of God. The people in the area are mistreated, abused, and power and corruption run rampant. There's a debate that we have today, and often in the Bible as well, on whether the leaders are a reflection of the people and the actions of the people, or the actions of the people become a reflection of the leader. So that we can't really blame the leader for just continuing the process of what's already going within the culture and the people today. Or is it that the culture and the desires and the actions of the leader infect the people so that they are fundamentally changed. But nonetheless, no matter which way you go on that question, people have stopped looking, they have stopped paying attention, they have stopped being intentional with the ways that they follow God. Isaiah, the prophet, talks about a good king that will come. And many believe that's Hezekiah. In the lineage of Hezekiah, Josiah comes for the scripture today. And we know that Josiah is a good king because of the way that he does things. Starting his kingship at eight years old, it says, many years later is where we pick up the scripture. The scripture starts with a lot of time and a lot of energy placed on paying the workers who have rebuilt the temple. The temple has become in ruins because people have stopped paying attention to it. The other things in their life have become more important. They're distracting. Their gaze is upon other things. Their gaze is upon the shiny things of life, the things that scream out to them, the things of desire, the things of comfort, the things of feeding their body and their belly full instead of looking after what God has asked them to do. The temple has become in ruins, and Josiah has finally got them oriented to be excited about rebuilding the temple and raising funds to rebuild it. And see, so he invites workers in to rebuild the temple. And here's what's beautiful. We know the difference in who this king is because of how he goes about things. Where other kings might have invited workers in, and then squabbled and fought about how much to pay them, had discussed 
and got it to the lowest possible price, it's not Josiah. He tells his secretaries and his priests and his treasurers to go to the workers and ask them what they hope to be paid. And he doesn't say, bring it back to me so we can, can discuss it. He says, pay them what they are owed. Give them what they desire, for they have done good work and they should be cared for. We know what kind of king Josiah <coughs> is because he is fair, he is righteous, he is just. The word justice is an interesting word because it comes from the root word just, which means to make things level, to make things fair, to give what is needed, exactly what is needed. Justice is about giving exactly what is needed. Needed for the person in power? No. Needed for the individual, the one that we care for, the one that we care about. Last week I told you we were set apart for mercy and compassion, for empathy, for putting ourselves in the shoes of others. Today I tell you that we go beyond just the imagination of what others might be going through. We go to the process of looking after what is needed for them to have fullness in life. To enact God's justice is about giving people not always what they desire, but what they need. Not the fleeting whims of their heart, but what they need to be seen, to be heard, to be cared for. Justice is about looking at the areas that we have gone awry, the uneven areas, the areas where things have been built up over time, maybe to help get things done quickly or so that people can say, I accomplished something and go about their day. Justice is about looking at the uneven areas of the world saying, where are the low spots that need to be raised up? And where are the high spots that need to be brought level? It's about tearing back the fabric and looking at what's hidden beneath. It's about taking time with our eyes and our ears and our hearts open to the needs of the world and saying that it's not just about me, but it's about we together. Josiah was a good king, not because he had power, but because he looked after God's justice in a way that was so profound. It skips over this in the passage. Did you hear that they found this little book in the back part of the temple? First Chronicles names this book as either a section of or the whole of Deuteronomy. Think about that. The people had stopped looking, stopped paying attention so much that one of the sacred books, one of the laws that was written down from Moses one of the first five books of the Hebrew Bible was put away in a back corner in a dusty shelf and forgotten about. and wasn't even found until they started to rebuild the temple. Because people had stopped caring. But Josiah somehow, even in the midst of not knowing the words in that book, somehow had enacted the spirit 
and the words of what was written. And as the scripture goes on, we say that it's read before Josiah. And he says, look at all the things that we've missed that we could have been doing. Not only what I've been doing yet, but going beyond with the desire in his heart to say, where is God unfolding further than what I have already known? And he weeps and mourns. It says he tears his clothes because of what he could have been doing, but he didn't know he should have been doing. And he brings things level again. Where are we called to step back, to look at what's been cobbled together in the world around us, the small decisions that we have made and others have made that have led to outcomes that we wonder, how have we gotten here? Maybe we look at the division within our own country. Maybe we look at where people have made a horse race, a passing of a football, that divides person from person, family member from family member, where it's hard to even go to family gatherings because we wonder if aunt so-and-so or uncle so-and-so is going to go off on politics and change the mood and everybody's going to be divided. Maybe we look at the news and we say, well, I used to live in that city and it wasn't so bad. How is it that people are criticizing that city so much? Or maybe we look at the news and think about people in our own lives that are connected to others and wonder how is it that we demonize or downplay or cast aside that person that I love and I care about. Maybe we look at the world around us and ask, why is the division the way it is? Or why are these people not cared for? Or those people not cared for? I wonder, how did we get here? Maybe it's the relationships in our own lives, like I said before. How did we get here? And the question is, did we pay attention to the actions, both our own personal and the actions of others? <coughs> the small decisions and words that were made that continue to keep people moving down a path that gets darker and darker and darker. The only way to make change is to tear back, to spring back, to tear open, and give room for God's light to get in. We do this through the ways that we care for others. We do this through the ways that we use our voice to share God's mercy and compassion love. We do this a little bit by little bit and things look a little better around us. Things look more just, more fair. <coughs> and even the least of these has exactly what is needed. So I ask you today, where have you failed to look? Where have you, in the hurriedness of life, slapped on another coat, said, that's good enough? Where have you failed to ask the questions and act in a way? Where have we just let the actions of what we've always done built upon itself? Where is God asking you to reveal something new? Hidden away, something <clears throat> sacred and beautiful. I know God continues to work in this world and in your lives, and is calling us to those moments of tearing back and revealing the light that is beneath. God of 
life and love. We rejoice in your abundant gifts. God of all peoples and all places, we celebrate your generosity and grace. God of the earth and the heavens, we praise you for your provision. Please join me in the prayer. <coughs> we realize that sometimes we forget who we are in our lives. We realize that sometimes we are quick to congratulate ourselves for the things you have done. We realize that sometimes we are half-hearted in our thanks, not giving it the whole heart of the you deserve. We realize that sometimes we give more praise to things than we do to the relationships that are built before us. We realize that sometimes we hold on stronger to the harms against us and regrets we have than we do to the blessings we have put in our lives. Prayer of assurance. Renew us this day. Revive us with your blessing. You visit the earth and water it, softening it with showers and blessings its growth. You make springs gush forth in the valleys. From your lofty abode, you water the mountains. God of life and love, we bless your holy name. Praise God in my eyes and in your The ushers, please come forward for the offering.
bless both those gifts that we have shared for food insecurity and all the kits that we are taking and collected to take to the in-gathering, which are sent around the world for those to learn in places afar. If you want to know more about that, I would love to talk to you about that. But let us go to God and work in prayer as we bless these items. God of all that is and all that was, all that will ever be, we thank you for all that you have given us. We, thank, we are thankful whenever we can see your grace dripping down to the earth. We are grateful when we can have and right the wrongs, turn another path, and encourage one another. Help us to recognize your light as it burns in our hearts today and every day. We bless these items that are a reflection of the hearts that we have, the desires that we have, to see your good in the world around us. Go with every item of food and every kit that is given, and allow the recipients to know that they are not alone and cared for by this congregation. In your holy name, amen. Please join in the closing hymn, the summons, in the Faith We Sing hymnal, number 2130. <laughs>
to look back and stand back and see the cobbled together, the uneven, the non-just and unjust areas of the world and to reflect how did it get this way. Look deeper, hear deeper, and uncover where God's light can be shown every day in the small and large actions of your life. Go in God's peace with God's call upon your lives. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.